clutter. But yeah, we can hide the uh, well, I guess if we... the faucet with this stuff. Yeah. If so if we have a battery issue. Do you want me to put the lobster on there? Make that... yes. yeah. 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 Do we have to yeah. turn off the gimbal yeah. to plug in? Under no, I would just rinse it. I wouldn't wash it. Yeah, just, just rinse it. Throw throw yeah. Yeah. Then... Do you think we are going to have battery? Yeah. I mean, I think it came down to it at the end. But it may, it just gave me a low battery. Yeah. But being can we turn the zoom or the brightness down? We turn the brightness down. That would help the most. Um, What's right? The phone was dying. Yeah, well, the phone he's almost just died last time. time. I mean, it got down to the end. Yeah, is there a way to charge it? It's fully charged right now, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was on the charger. The airplane one will help, and then we can turn the brightness down a little bit. Okay. Um, do you know how to do that? Here. You'll pull. Here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need message. Uh, yeah. so if we're on Wi-Fi, it's, it's, it's supposed to be on. I think I just put do not disturb. As long as we're already on, it's checking. Check the checks. Yep. Check in with your chef. Did that one just come through? No. Yeah. Something did, but not the one that you sent. Just says new offers group chat. <laughs> it's iMessages. Oh, so that's. It didn't, that you, didn't come through last time. From beeping? It doesn't go on the Wi Fi. But it's not okay, beeping. Now that one but it's going to block your view, right? Will it pop up on your screen? It pops up. I mean, it's not horrible. But you gotta turn it back when you're done. I put do not disturb on and it doesn't. I'll just mute the group chat. Oh, is there a setting for notifications? That's what she's doing. Oh, she's There's a couple other things, but those are the big ones that just go all day long. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's eight people in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. What? <laughs> there's eight people in the waiting room. Early. Oh, I just don't want to miss this one. Yay. Eight people in the waiting room. That's more than we've ever had. We have like um, a lot of people. Yeah. That's super exciting. Well, I, know. You know? I don't think so. Okay, so I've got this guy ready for you. Okay. We've got our extra supplies here. Pretty organized. Check, check, double check. What else do we need? Um, Chef and I both need water. Yeah. You need water? I got water. You need water? Water. Get yourself some water. Okay, what do I need? Wine opener. <laughs> We're going to use So what are we making, people? Lobster and saffron risotto, and do we have a dessert on there, Steve? Some drunken strawberries. Yeah. That's what our prosecco is for. Oh, Chef, you're over here. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> I haven't eaten all damn day. Well, actually, I had breakfast and lunch. But... <laughs> it feels like I haven't eaten all damn day. <laughs> it's so funny. So. I 
<clears throat> I got to do these classes, uh, new beginnings classes for separated parents. And uh, they're on Tuesdays. So I'm up in the room doing them. And Erica texts me. She says, what do you want to do for dinner? I ate my meal prep. I'll make you something. So I says, I'd like broiled lobster tail with saffron risotto. I won't know how to make that till Friday. <laughs> well, you better stay tuned in though. Is she following? Uh, I need, actually, I need uh, Jennifer to send her there. Okay. She doesn't know if she'll be able to hop on. But she's hoping she will be able to. Nice. Yeah, this one we're going to get everyone interacted pretty good. Try to anyway, right? Yes. Okay. Where did Jennifer go? It's like six o'clock. Hello? Jennifer? She's out wrapping her lips. Jennifer? No, they're all together somewhere. I know, they're all inside. In front, I would say. Oh, did you, um, The whole that's the whole straight up thing, man. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. 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 Got
and going. So maybe those three things we yep. want to do first we instead do of starting it with our dessert. That'll be kind of their pre prep. Oh, you can mess it. Yeah. Okay. That would be good. Just in case we don't want them to fall so far behind because they didn't do any of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of a sudden they're going to be like, okay, so you're, so you're, starting you're starting it from there. You're starting it from there. I'm going to go start it live. Go start it live. Here we go. We are ready. We're acting like we're live already. We are live right here. Where's the camera? Are you the only camera? What happened to our other camera? I thought you were doing going to both. No. We can. I think it depends how much help she needs because there's so many people. Okay. Like so, once we see if the chat and everything is under control, then. Last time we did this for the. We did that for most, but we only had like seven people on. Instead of like we cannot. I mean, how many we have so far? So far, there's 19 in the waiting room. Wow, that's awesome. Let's let them in. See what happens when you have three. <laughs> so she is. Let them all. Let you run down there. Yeah, whatever you just did, we have to tell them about too. The butter? Yeah, so what are we doing? Butter, butter. This is for the lobster tail. Right. That lobster. we can we we can have them they'll get it. They'll tell us. Okay. Yep. Anyway, it's a point that we've already pre prepped, so we might want to point it out. We're gonna do the lobster, the oven, and the sauce. Yeah. And then go into the you want to add in each of your let's measure it. She wants to measure it. That's all right. That's all right. Some people No, I like to be organized on this crew that needs to be organized. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are free prep things. Stop. Are you going to hear the intro? Okay. Oh, All right. I'm going to admit people. Oh, okay. That's what I And you are streaming live on Facebook. So we're admitting everyone You're right now. We are live. Hello, Facebook world. This is Steve Ryder, and this is Beth Ryder. Ryder. And Chef Jude. Hi, everyone. You guys can remember that we have been doing some very, very special dinners. But tonight is Valentine's dinner. So we are gonna make some what, lobster? We're gonna do some broiled lobster tail with a saffron risotto. Fantastic, Ooh. and what's for dessert? Drunken strawberries, of course. <laughs> Drunken <laughs> strawberries, now for you that don't know, saffron is a spice. Saffron is a spice, it actually is the centers of a flower, which is then picked out and dried. It is actually the most expensive spice on the market. So we picked the most expensive spice for you guys especially to make this a special night. That's right. For Valentine's Day. So let's get started. What do we do? We got to get started. started. Uh, everybody, let's make sure that one, our oven's on. We want to get it on to uh, 500 broil if necessary, if your oven doesn't go to 500. So let's get that so on. So turn your ovens get on your now, oven everybody. On. We've yep. got ours going. Next thing. Next step, we want to make sure that our lobster tails are not frozen all the way through. These guys, very, very thought out. If they are frozen, what we'd want to do is we want to just get your lobster tail, put it in a bowl of water. They're going to thaw really quickly while we get our risotto going and the dessert. By do the you time we submerge them in the water? Correct, so that that, and cold water, not hot water. Never want to thaw in hot water. Okay. Potential for growing bacteria rapidly, hot water. Perfect. Not hot water, no bacteria. Perfect. So, so we, we don't do. want any bacteria. No, we don't. Okay, right. now next, what? Thing? next thing we got is we want to get our chicken stock going in a pot. I got it just to a nice simmer. So if you want to pour your chicken stock into uh, a sauce pot, that way, turn it on, get it going. Once it starts boiling, just turn it down to a low simmer. The reason we want to get it hot is when we start making our risotto, we're going to add it at bits at a time. So in small portions, we want it to be hot so that that way we're not cooling our risotto down. We want to continue, can, we want to maintain the heat during the whole cooking process is what we're going to want to do. Perfect, perfect. So, well, what's the difference between rice and risotto? People ask me all the time. So rice and risotto, risotto is rice. Uh, okay. It is actually a, a classical dish in Italy where, from Northern Italy, and it's cooking rice to a creamy texture. What we want to do is we want to use our barrio rice. It takes right. quite a bit of time to cook. Uh, what, you're, what we're gonna do is we have already got ours pre-measured out. And how we want to get started is we're gonna need are we going to start with the 
dessert them? Yep, we okay. can start with our desserts. Perfect. Like always, because they usually need some time to chill. Perfect. So everybody, oven's on, your lobsters are thawed, you're stirring your chicken broth, and now we're rolling into dessert. That's right. And hopefully you've bought flowers for your lovely significant other, which I did. Especially men, uh, you've got a few more days, but chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop. Chop. So this one is like an overnight process as well. They say uh, two to four hours is a good time. Uh, we want to let them sit for overnight if possible. The longer you let them sit, the more of the alcohol the strawberries are going to absorb. So Thus, drunken strawberries. That's right. All right. So we got our strawberries. We took the tops off. The reason being is we don't want any dirt in our desserts. So we fully washed them. We let them dry out. And then we're going to take some Prosecco. You're going to want to pour this in not too fast because it is bubbly. So it'll bubble over if you're not careful. It's not the science project with the volcano. I mean, if you want to sneak some baking soda <laughs> in the bottom and pick somebody up. Good prank there. I like that one. Yeah. Well, We're going to want to make sure that our strawberries are fully submerged because we don't want to skimp out on any drunkenness for our Valentine's Day. They say, Chef, that the more you uh, put that champagne on there, the better I get, better looking and taller. <laughs> taller? <laughs> <laughs> is that the bubble speaking? I think that is the champagne speaking. All right. I'm excited. We got our strawberries fully submerged there. We're just going to want to pop these in the refrigerator. Okay. And Jennifer is checking in and saying hi to everybody. Jennifer, how many people do we have on today? Uh, we have 27. 27. Welcome, everyone. Woo! This is our fourth chef night. Our third. I think it's our third chef third night. Chef night. We're really excited for everybody to join us tonight. All right, now we've got our dessert started. Desserts hanging out. Like I said, if you could do it 24 hours in advance is best. Two to four hours is a good time to let them soak up this Prosecco mm -hmm. and uh, have some delicious dessert when we're ready. Was that the whole bottle? It was just about the whole bottle for what we had. That was, I did two clamshells, so if you want to Pour the rest in there. We can do that. They Perfect. were fully submerged, so. Perfect. The best part is, is you can drink that champagne when we're done. Absolutely. Right. Looking forward to it. A little toast, right? All right. All right. On to the next. What we're going to want to do, our risotto is a process. It's going to take time. This is one that once you get it going, it's a continuous watching, stirring and watching and stirring, making sure that we don't burn it, making sure that we don't let all of the liquid evaporate. We're going to want to cook out the liquid we add in as it evaporates, and then we're gonna add more. We're gonna keep going until our, our bardo rice is a creamy texture. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is saute. We all learned what saute is, right? Absolutely, yeah. All right. So we're gonna to wanna to get our pan on nice and high. We're going to wanna to get this nice and, we, a nice big surface like this is good for the stirring purposes, so that that way uh, we have a good even cooking surface. If we try to cram all of that into a pot like this, you're going to get pockets of uncooked risotto, so it's going to take a lot longer. So Absolutely. if you have a, a, a skillet, a fry pan, something big like this, large walls, because we're going to be adding liquid to it. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to get that pan nice and hot. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil. Olive oil. We're gonna wait for that ripple to happen in our oil. That means that our pan's gonna be nice and hot so we can get that saute. High heat, little bit of fat. That's what we're looking for. Right. How much olive oil? Got our nice onion here all ready to go. Let oh. this go. get almost oh there. Oh God, I got the wrong one. Not quite, we're almost there. I'd like to say hi to Denise and Steve and Susan. How you guys doing? Isaac, nice to see you. Lisa, hey, we are so glad you guys are on here. I'm not sure who the chef is in your family. I'm normally the chef. Yes, you are. But tonight, my <laughs> lovely wife is assisting, and I don't really have to do much, so I'm pretty excited. I can't see him. Oh. All right, now that we got our pans nice and hot, see how our oil ripples nicely? Yeah. See how 
listen for that saute sound. That's what we're high heat. I'll take that. There we go. And we're going to want to cook this on high heat, get a good saute caramelization happening. We don't want that skin in there. We're going to cook these onions until we get a nice translucent color so that they're see-through. We don't want to caramelize at all, but we do want them to be nice and soft so that that way you don't really notice them when you're eating the risotto. Even though they are, this would be considered a small dice, the size that we have them at, but once they cook through, they'll be a little bit smaller. That's right, they will get a little smaller. Give this a quick little stir here. All right, that's sauteing up nicely. Now, if you guys have any questions, Jennifer is managing our chat box. So please put your questions in there and Jennifer will bring them up so we can all talk and answer your questions as you're running into things when you're cooking. That's so right. What's the pot in the back? The pot in the back? That's our chicken stock. We want to have that at a nice simmer so that that way it's hot and then we keep adding the hot liquid into our risotto. We don't want to cool it down any. So should we put that on? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, good. <laughs> yep, so grab your chicken stock and put it in a um, pot and set it right behind the, the um, onions. onions. Yep. But do we just uh, simmer it? Yeah, simmer. I would turn it on full blast right now to bring it up to a nice hot temperature and then you can turn it down to a simmer. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Our onions are getting here. Not, and let's say, not in, quite. in case anyone joined us late, we want to also remind them about the. Yep, let's we want to remind them about those two things. And the we onions. want our chicken stock to be at a simmer. We want our lobster tails to be nice and thawed out. We don't want any frozenness to them. We're gonna make sure that we have some butter melted. So that that way, when we're ready to do our lobsters, it's just brushing our butter on. So that's ready. And you can, how do you melt it really quickly? You're just gonna pop in the microwave and yep. dish. Yeah, if you're gonna make, if you're gonna do it in the microwave, uh, pop it in for about 25 seconds at a time, power of 50. So you're not gonna do a full blast, or else your butter will pop and explode all over your microwave. Absolutely. A good trick for that is take a paper towel and just wrap it around the top wrap it right around the top and stick it in there. So that way, if there is any splatter, easy clean up. That's right, easy clean up. And then don't forget your oven's supposed to be on. So if you have not turned on your oven, turn your oven on. All right. Oh, that's looking good. Yep, we're almost there. If Go ahead. you start to caramelize a little bit, you want to turn your heat down just slightly. <laughs> Any other questions in the chat box? Jennifer, you're good. Yeah, I'm cooking. All right. Now our next step is we're going to add uh, our rice to our translucent onions. We're going to give it a good stir. I'll take that from you. Thank you. Bit of salt. Did you say salt? Salt? Yes, salt. Okay. We're going to cook 
this for just a couple minutes, one to two minutes. All right. Our next step, we're going to be adding our white wine to deglaze the pan. You remember to deglaze the pan. All that caramelization, all the sugars that have come out of our onions. We're gonna to wanna to add some white wine. Oh, look at that. Yeah. At this point, we're gonna give it a stir. Beth, if you could grab our saffron there. We're gonna add our pinch of saffron as well. Go ahead and add one in. Just a pinch. I would, for what we got going here, I'd probably do that whole thing you got in there. Just put it in? Just dump it in there. There we go. I say, let's go ahead and do that the other, other one. one. We might as well. All right. We're, we're, feed, we're feeding a couple tonight. Perfect. Yep. Give this a stir. So for you at home, maybe one of the one container one, of the yep, saffron? One should be plenty. Um, saffron was actually used to color dishes and not really used for the flavor. And then they realized how flavorful that the saffron is. So that gives it a nice yellow tint to it. It really does, and it yet it doesn't come out looking yellow. I mean, it comes out yellow when you cook it, but it right, look yellow when it's in there. Interesting. All right, now we got this all mixed in nicely. We're going to be adding some of our stock. Okay. Why not bloom your saffron first? Does it taste the same without blooming? Yes. Okay, so let's the question was why not bloom your saffron first? And put it in water? Right? Is that what they mean? I didn't bloom. Yeah, so okay. we are doing that by adding our chicken stock. Okay. Yeah, so it's we're incorporating that process right now in Into the, the dish. Pan. That's right. Okay. We want to keep all that flavor. But that's a great question. So we're going to add some more. We don't want to cover it fully, but we do want to make sure that there is enough liquid in there. See how we got enough liquid in here. This one we're not going to cover. Like rice, typically at this point, you would put your lid on it, and then that way we would let it kind of steam inside of there. This one, we're going to keep adding liquid and stirring and keep adding liquid. And as it adds liquid, it cooks out so that that way. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Let's, we can add a little more liquid to this guy. And we can prep out our lobster tails without having to worry about this too much. So let's turn our heat down a little bit. We want to take it down to about a medium. We're going to add some more stock to it and give it a good stir so then that way it doesn't stick on us. And then that way we can attend to our lobster tails without this losing all of its moisture. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Smells amazing. My new saffron cologne. Right, good. right for uh, Valentine's. Let's yeah. turn this down a little bit more. There we go. All right. All right. Moving Probably. right along to our lobster tails. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure we have the sheet pan lined with foil. That way, it's easy cleanup, right? Perfect. I love easy cleanup. They say uh, in our recipe here, you can use shears and cut it like this. You can take a knife, nice sharp knife, heavy gauged. Uh, you don't want to use a little tiny guy, but you're going to want to make sure that there's some weight to your blade so that that way, when you cut through, you'll be able to cut through this skin. You want shears? Oh. You want shears? And it cracks pretty easy, and we're going to get that butterfly right there. So you just want to make sure you get into that shell. Little hammer action. Oh, 
It's okay, guys. This is a trained professional. If you want to use some tin shears, shears that'll you work. You just cut right through the shell this one. first, and then yeah, that's the way I do it. But sometimes I hurt my hand. Um, want to get them all butterfly out? Any questions about the lobster or how's everybody's doing? Special shout out to Ashley and Alfonso. Hey guys. Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you online. I hope you enjoy your meal. We're going to have all of you show your meals when we're ready, right before we eat. And then maybe we'll even do a toast. Awesome. And if you guys would like, then don't we have a kids' night or a kids' uh, special that we have on the agenda coming up? Oh, uh, we yeah, brunch is what we were talking about, Dylan. We're going to make sure that for everybody, we're going to send out our list of upcoming events. So if you're enjoying tonight and want to join us again, we have another list that's going to be going out with all the dates on it so you can plan ahead. We're going to do a Sunday brunch and we're going to teach some of the young adults how to make some pancakes that are special little shapes and some different stuff, right, Chef? Absolutely. How you can take original pancake batter and kind of let your creativity and imagination run wild. I mean, they make pineapple upside down cake. <laughs> Why not put it in a pancake, right? And you know, we might even do a contest for a gift certificate for, uh, you know, maybe Amazon. So for you kids, you might want to hop on Google and see some different ideas. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. For breakfast ideas for pancakes. We want to make sure we attend to this risotto. We can't forget about it. If you've noticed, it does lose its liquid quickly. So we're going to continue. Oh, we got some lobster questions. Go ahead. Are you just cutting the lobster shell or through the meat? Okay, so we're going to get back to that section right now. So you. So, question, how do we get the meat out of the shell? That's where we're at. Yep, we're right there, right on schedule. Great question. Right so on what schedule. were the questions in case everybody couldn't hear? Am I cutting just the shell? So yes, I'm cutting just the shell, but in that process, it's butterflying the lobster tail like such. And what you're gonna wanna do is just get in here and the meat itself comes- kind of separating the meat from, the, from yep, the shell? From the shell and you can open it up. Try not to break it off, but we can open it up pretty good here. And then what we'll do, is you're gonna grab this meat here and it pretty much comes right out like this. Now I'm gonna leave that last little bit left on a tack and tack like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this out some we're gonna put our shell back down like this so that now our meat sits right out on top like that because that's what we're gonna broil. So the you would leave it attached at this very end. Mm -hmm. When you pull it up, then you put the shell back under and lay it on top. Yep, let's do another one. Let's do another one. So if you get in here, you'll put your finger in and it'll work. It'll The meat comes off pretty easily. You don't have to get too crazy with it. And the shell, And the reason I leave it attached in the back is so that that way it's a presentation thing. Because the meat itself is, see how it's pretty much fully out of the shell here? And then all we're doing is using the shell as like a holding device. So I that up. Yep. Pop if you could give our risotto a stir Absolutely. over there. Probably add a little more stock to that as well. You are right. We need it. Check your risotto.
If you're cutting your lobsters and it doesn't have a, a nice little butterfly section to it, then you go ahead and make a score on the meat like this so that that way it'll butterfly open so that that way when we broil it, it'll broil evenly and that's what we want. We don't want to have any raw pieces in the middle and your outsides overcooked. And Beth is doing a fabulous job with the risotto. Did you know that shellfish is one of the top eight food allergies? Kind of like peanuts. Tree nuts actually over peanuts. So a walnut, a pecan, um, cashews, as opposed to like your regular roasting peanut. So when I'm on the plane and they're not gonna give out peanuts, but they give out cashews. <laughs> That might be twice as bad. That might be twice as bad. That's correct. See, you need to pay attention and keep your mask on, right? That's right. <clears throat> All right, guys, if you're not getting hungry yet, I don't know what you're thinking because these lobsters look absolutely amazing. I tell you, I can see them perfectly. Should they de-vein the lobster? If there is a vein in there, yes, pop that vein out. I just basically cut it, gave it a little rinse under the water, flushed it right out of there. We've had one. Unless you're wanting to eat the vein, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't scare your date like that on Valentine's no, Day. Right? No, no, you know. Now, tell me a little bit about Chef. Uh, what is the row in a lobster? The what's up? The row. Like if you had a whole main lobster, you have the tail, you have the claws, and then I have a friend that eats the row, that green stuff inside. Oh, uh, so the row is going to be essentially the brain, the brain membrane of the lobster. That is so you're gonna get lobster smart. You you might get lobster smart. It's actually one of the delicacies of eating the lobster when you have the whole lobster set at your table is to pop that head off and suck out the row. Okay. Chris Not, said in Maine they call that the guac. The guac? Lobster guac? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We love you, Maine. <laughs> That's not a fun. How's that risotto looking? Looking there? good. We're going to start calling you, you know, and are you from Northern Italy, Beth? Or are you from Southern Italy? Uh, maiden name was Lo Cicero, correct? Correct. Okay, I think that's Southern Italy, Chef. You didn't notice she is left-handed. That's a right-handed spoon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm running a little low on mine. Stop. Stop. We got a little more. Or how are we doing? How's this? We gotta let it. We gotta let it go. So it's keeps. Let it go it, a more. Yep, it keeps doing its thing. We'll add more stock to ours since we're cooking for five. Perfect. Turn that up just a second. Yeah. And then that's looking nice. A few more minutes for that guy. So risotto is the one where, yeah, you can't just put a lid on and walk away because it'll just dry up and burn up on you. You see how the abario rice absorbs it that is. liquid quickly, right? I'm amazed at how quickly it's absorbing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went through the whole pot of stock. How are we doing heat-wise? We're stocked we're, up on we're, stock. We're doing good. All right. All right, let so that do its thing there. Ready. Yeah. Then we want to get our butter ready. Do you have a brush for him? I was looking for that. I'm going to zap my Thank butter you. just a little bit longer here. Actually, let's do this. 
this is a little trick, if I may. When you're gonna melt your butter, if it's not all the way melts, we're gonna have a little more. We're gonna wanna get our flavor in there. So today we're using some paprika, some cayenne, and some garlic. When eating shellfish and butter, you gotta have garlic. It's just the rule of thumb there. So we got our butter. And what we're gonna do is, when we heat it in the microwave, it's gonna actually heat up and cook our butter a little bit to actually extract that flavor. So that that way we're gonna enhance our butter in the microwave the same time as we melt it. Perfect. So with this guy, it says a pinch. I don't know what your pinches are. A little bit of cayenne. Ooh, Careful. It up. Yep, a lot of cayenne. I mean, a little bit of cayenne goes a long, long way. Range. That's yes. right. Remember, less is more in cayenne's world. We're gonna add some smoked paprika. And we are gonna add a little bit of salt. Since we use unsalted butter in our kitchen, we're just gonna add probably about half a teaspoon. There we go. Make sure we get our butter melted fully. Make sure you're checking your rice. Yep. Like this is constant and making sure you add your stock. Yeah. So when you're adding, that's why we turn our stock up to get it hot because if we don't want to cool this process down. Enough. Absolutely. Oh, that looks amazing. We got our butter here. And we've used pepper flakes in our butter with our- Yeah, so that, another, that's another that's one as well, absolutely. I like the cayenne too. Here. The, Here. the difference. Yeah, the red pepper flake and the cayenne it has almost the same heat volume. Cayenne's gonna be a little bit more. Uh, the oils in your cayenne's gonna hang on a lot longer than, okay. than the red pepper, pepper flakes, flakes that's okay. right. So. That's why you want to be careful with using that and not to get it on your fingers and rub your eye or you'll be hating uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's <laughs> for sure. So okay. when, we, when we get on? to this point, basically, we want to give it a good generous, make sure we get all of it incorporated. And we kind of just want to slather it up on all the meat. You could do these ahead of time as well. Stick them in the refrigerator so that that way, when you're ready to go, if you do that, do them ahead of time before all your guests come over or your Cupid, your Valentine, then you're going to want to let it sit out a little bit and come up to room temperature, okay. kind of like we did with our steaks when we did our Wellington. Absolutely. Right. Right. You don't want to just pull it right out of the refrigerator and throw but, it in the Right. Room. We want it to kind of come up to room temperature so that that way the whole piece, the whole flesh of the meat is the same temperature as opposed to the inside staying cooler longer than the outside. So the outside cooks faster. So we wanna make sure that we don't run into that. How's everybody doing? Everyone staying on task? We gotta slow down a little. Any other questions? Are you checking your rice? As I go to check ours? Risotto. Risotto. Let's me. make sure we check that risotto. Don't risotto. let your don't let your uh, liquid go. And there you go, Beth. You're doing great. Boy, we are so glad to have you guys with us tonight. Hopefully you're just as excited as we are to have this fabulous dinner. Oh, chef, this is looking amazing. Looking good, looking good. So how much heat is this gonna put on this lobster? We didn't go too crazy with the uh, cayenne. Okay. The smoked paprika is gonna give it that smokiness. Um, 
Paprika has some heat to it, not a lot, very, very, very mild. But uh, the cayenne, that's why we just did a dash. A little dash will do, they say. Yes, indeed. And then uh, should be good. All right. Looks like Beth has the risotto under control. Yeah, how's that looking over it's there? Amazing. Where are we at with this? Is the broth chicken or vegetable? Chicken. Can you substitute to vegetable? You can absolutely use vegetable. With a dish like this, we can even use fish stock if we wanted to. It'll go hand in hand. Thank you. All right. Let's see how far away we are here. You can see how it's starting to get creamy. Absolutely. We can see a little bit how the risotto itself is still kind of thick. It is getting slightly there, but it's still undercooked. You can tell as you smush it. Now we're going to need a little more time on that, which is okay. And what you're looking for is just a soft texture. You don't want mushy, right? What's the texture it, we're looking when we try it? It will be creamy so it'll kind of have like a mushiness to it okay but we don't want the grains of the barrio rice to be hard still okay we don't want them to be crunchy okay so we That's are going to work in words That's yeah nice and soft nice and soft mm -hmm. all right i think we're right on cue so, Chef, when we're talking about crunchy, that would be, um, if we're talking vegetables, al dente? Well, yes, al dente would be crisp to bite, so that it does have a slight crispness to it when we go to bite into it. Perfect. And something like this, that melt in your mouth. Yeah, we definitely don't want any crunch to our rice. So, same thing when you're cooking all rices, is you don't want it to be crunchy, but we do want it to have that firmness right. to it so that, that yeah absolutely so that it's not mushy rice this one might seem like mushy rice but that's the process of what we're doing it's and did i miss what the rice was what it is our barrio rice? rice what type what type of rice a barrio yeah i would i just saw that okay thank you yep Mm -hmm. We're going to let our, our, our risotto go for probably about two to three more minutes before we get our lobster tails in. Uh, rule of thumb, it was uh, one minute per ounce of meat. We got eight ounce tails, so we're going to start at eight minutes. Okay. We're going to go from there. We want to make sure that our rack in our oven is about four to five inches. I'd go with five inches from the broiler itself because it's going to be a high temperature, really, really hot. We don't want to burn it at all. So if there's enough space from the broiler so that we don't burn the tops of these, that's our important piece to it. Perfect. So when we broil, it's going to be really hot, really fast. And with fish, lobsters, essentially, is, it's a good way to cook it because we want it to be real quick and real fast, sear all the juices in, and then we'll let them rest a little bit. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We got any questions out there? Jennifer, any questions? No, nothing at the moment. Everybody's busy, busy cooking. That's good. That's sure good. Checking your results. I, I do have a question. If rice yeah. is if rice is not um, compatible, or how do I want to say not with um, my system, can we do quinoa? It wouldn't be the same. Uh, you could serve the lobster tail with quinoa, but you're not going to be able to get this creamy consistency that you will with the rice. So it's cooking out the starches 
of the arborio rice is what's giving it the creaminess. So, okay. I mean, yeah, quinoa would be a good alternative for a light option because you don't want to overpower anything. Right. Because we got a flavor here, and then we have a flavor here. And when we mix those flavors together, the palates, your poor taste buds are, what do we do? <laughs> so you can do it as a side. It would definitely be OK as a side. Yeah, quinoa would be OK as a side, but it's not going to be this, what we're going for for today's dish. OK. We have a question. When does the lemon come into play? When does the lemon come into play is the question. For a lobster or a risotto? Uh, lemon, fresh squeeze a lemon on your lobster tail after it comes out of the broiler. We don't want to put it on there, that fresh, vibrant lemon flavor to it really uh, will help enhance the flavor that we've already put on the lobster tail. Like I said, this is delicacy, so it is very mild. We don't want to overpower it. We want to be able to taste the lobster flesh itself. They said there was lemon in the recipe that was sent out, so it's probably at the end. end. Yep. yep. See how we're getting nice and creamy here? Add some stock. When we get down to this point, it seems like every time we add stock, we just stir it away. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Where it says on saffron risotto, a half a cup of unsalted butter cut into small pieces. Are we doing that? Gonna, we are going to add that in. I was just wondering because I cut it all up into small pieces. <laughs> So we're just, are we just not quite there yet? That would be at the end. That's we're gonna be at the very end. So if you have your butter cut up or ready to go, we are almost there. Yep. Great question. In case you don't have your butter ready, maybe if this is a good time to cut it up. All right, now we're at this point of our risotto. I say it's safe to say that we can add our lobster tails right into the broiler. Making sure that our rack is about four, I'd say five inches from the top from your broiler up there. Well, evenly spaced so that that way the heat can surround them all at the same time. We're gonna let those go, set a timer for eight minutes. Ready to go. Eight minutes. Eight Steve, minutes. you have the timer? I have the timer. All right. Um, it looks like you shut the oven there. So does that oven not permit for broiling to be open where other stoves do? That is correct. We are actually on a setting of 550 degrees for this oven. So it is more like a convection oven as opposed to a broiler itself. If you do have a broiler on, you would want to leave your door slightly cracked like that, because all that, that heat in there is going to be very intense. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question? Go ahead, caller. I, I wanted to find out, we just sampled the risotto. And yes. we feel like there's a, maybe a little bit of a flavor element missing. It, it, what would we add if we thought that? Well, we're going to be adding some Parmesan cheese when we're all finished. And we're going to add a little bit of butter to it. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. In the culinary world, when, you, when you're in the kitchen, nobody wants the task of the risotto because they got to stand around for a while, <laughs> especially, if you're, especially if you're making risotto for, you know, 150 people, you got a big pot the size of your stove and you're stirring and stirring and stirring. So Sherry started a little bit ahead of us. She sent us a picture of her final dish. It looks amazing. Oh, and that's she said, since we cheated in our little head, I would say the lobster came out amazing. And she will definitely keep this recipe. Excellent, oh, excellent. Fantastic. I love that you started ahead. So if you had any questions or problems, you could have asked. So that's wonderful.
So make sure you want to sit down and take a nap for this one. Right. <laughs> Keep stirring. Keep but as you, as you can see, though, as we move it away like this, you see how the creaminess is starting to form really, really well in out of the Absolutely. barrio rice. I see it's really changing a mm -hmm. lot at this point. Got any big plans for Valentine's Day, Beth? Well, this is kind of our special Valentine's with all of you and with you cooking. This yeah. is perfect for us. So we're excited to have Valentine's with um, some of our staff and, and all of our um, clients that joined us tonight. It's one of the most romantic things Steve said for you. It is. What, what is the most? Yeah, what's one of, what's, what, what would you say would be the top? Well, he did propose um, on a um, gondola, on his, on his new, took one knee down on the gondola up at Gainey Ranch. So that was pretty, pretty exciting. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Those are always good stories to hear. Absolutely. I propose around here. We're at Gondola Ranch. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe she said yes. But she, did. <laughs> she did. Yeah. Okay. It's actually in the movie uh, How a Star Was Born. Oh, when really? he's freaking out, he just takes the guitar string and ties it up and makes a little oh, ring because right. he doesn't want to lose it. So that was one of the first movies that my wife and I saw. So I thought it'd be a cool idea to do. And, that's uh, exciting. It was it was cool. Did it under the stars where we like to hang out. So it was fun. Very nice. And what are you doing for Valentine's? I will be cooking. Who would have thought? <laughs> I will be actually celebrating Valentine's Day with my in-laws for their 40th wedding anniversary. Oh, fantastic. So uh, they kept hearing about all these cooking classes that we're doing and uh, beef wellington. Uh, how come we haven't had beef wellington? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to make them the beef wellington. Uh, I'm going to do a herb and goat cheese mashed potato. Wow. So go with that, That's and amazing. then just a roasted vegetable uh, for dessert, maybe like a red velvet cheesecake or something. So. Something just toss it all together. You know, it kind of works out that Actually, way. Actually, I do like that. Um, I like that menu, so we'll have to try that. That sounds delicious. I know. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. Where are we at here? a little longer are we there remember we don't want any we don't want anything to be creamy but not hard no no, no crunchiness to it. Not, i didn't have almost, any crunchiness almost there. oh i didn't have one little crunchy mm -hmm. yeah. that's right, so we are, we're right we're almost there very we're, close we're right on cue with our lobsters yep. so we want to let that keep going very close though yep very close. I'm just going to add what yeah, we have there. Two minutes, 38 seconds. Yes, Chef. Does Chef offer any other online classes? I do. Hit me up on Chef J. Vangelis. That's Chef J. V. A. N. G. E. L. I. S. Uh, on Instagram, where I do little tips and stuff. And if you want to set up a cooking class, yeah, put it in the chat box. I'll be more than happy to do some teachings. I do actually cooking classes for uh, senior communities. I myself work in senior living every day, but I go to different other 55 adult active communities Wonderful. and do demos there. I was able to do uh, the Wellington for them as well after I practice it here with you guys. Perfect. Yep. And then uh, doing other things. The Bananas Foster is always a good one to show them. Uh, one of my favorites um, is making them. So you make mayonnaise as opposed to buying mayonnaise and what the difference is and what how different the taste is. A lot of people, it's amazing. Jude? It's always a fun one. And then what you do is when you make, you basically make an, an aioli. That's what 
many yeah, ingredients, exactly. right? Yep. And then you have like five other no. ingredients, so like roasted red bell peppers, roasted garlic, avocado, John, that we can just make mayonnaise, which is really fat. You bring your at home, and then you add something to it. Open. And then you now something that you can put into something else. Absolutely. Oh, that's a great idea. Chipotle aioli on a turkey club sandwich. Yeah. That sounds really good. If you're watching your carbs, put it in a tortilla. Wrap it up. Right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. One thing we want to have everybody add to the chat box too. What would you like to see us make? Um, we're hosting these once a month, and we want to know what you want to make at home and have us with Chef Jude uh, making a dinner for you. So put in the chat box what you're interested in seeing us do. We'd love to see it. Absolutely. Are we up to the butter and the cheese? We are just about up to the butter and the cheese to the risotto, correct. Okay. We have probably about three more minutes left on that risotto till it was nice and tender what we we're looking for. And then right at the end, add your butter, add your cheese, give it a good stir. Uh, and then pop a lid on it and let it set for a minute. About two to three minutes is what we're going to want to let it set for. Do we have butter? We don't have butter. Else. No, we got butter right here. Would you like that? Oh, it's over oh, to that. I don't see why not. You? Oh, okay. That's, I, mean, I was thinking lobster butter. Okay. But... Right? It's going to go. Lobster ready? Lobster's ready. ready. All right. Let's take a look at this guy here. <laughs> that was a lobster alarm. <laughs> Ooh, we. Could you, um, could you repeat? What, 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 are you, what are you looking for? Let's what are you look looking for? This. What we're looking for, see, firmness, bounces back really nice, but it's not stiff, right? So make, this is how you check your steaks, rare, medium, rare, medium, okay. medium, well, well done. Okay. So that's what you're looking for is probably right about, yeah, like right about there, right there. Okay. See, nice. We don't want to overcook it. As we pull it out, yeah, there we go. Let those rest. Turn our oven off. Our risotto is about ready. Add our cheese to it. Did you add your butter? We're gonna add our butter. We're getting ready. And you the can cheese. Add your butter. We're adding our butter. We decided to go with a little flair today. Okay, so the butter should be melted? Nope, you can just add your chopped little pieces of butter. We're just adding a little bit of our uh, butter we put on the lobster into our risottos. Kick it up a notch, as they would say. Yep, cheese, we're gonna need one cup of cheese. Quarter cup of cheese. So this guy, once we're here, let's turn it off the heat. Right there, give it a good stir. Do we have a lid for this guy, Beth? Yes, we do. When you leave your uh, lobster to rest, do you usually put foil over it or do you just leave it like that? I, we're just going to leave it out for just a minute. Okay. What we're, I've turned my oven off. So what I want it to do is I want the oven, I want the heat to escape most of the way because we don't want to cook it anymore. So if we let most of it escape, we're just going to pop it back in and let it set in there so that that way it can stay warm. Because okay. we don't want it to cook anymore. We just want to keep it warm. So when we go to sit down and eat it, it's nice warm. and warm for us. Absolutely. Perfect. So the oven's off. We just opened it up. Let the, some of the let, heat escape. Yep, let some of that heat okay. escape. And then when we go to shut it, it'll capture what we're doing. So then that way we're not going to overheat it at all. Our next step is our plate up portion. Perfect. That's my... That's that my is, favorite part. Oh, mine too, because you make it look so good. We could do it's kind of the same. Thing. Yep, they're about the same. So I have a butter question. Go ahead, Paula. So we added the uh, the the lobster butter into the risotto. Uh huh. And then we still have this cut up butter. So we are we still adding butter or did we do enough? 
you don't need to. That should be enough if you add a little bit in there. Do you have some butter left over for your lobster tail? Yep. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, we do. Well, I did. Your little, use your little pieces you cut up and melt them down. That way All you right. don't have butter for that. Because cool. we're going to put the butter on top of that a little bit more, or butter to dip in. Yeah, uh, butter, to, it's basically on the side so that we can dip, dip it, it in, in if you like. Perfect. Yep. So let's zap these back in, just so that that way they can stay hot. Okay. Our risotto's finishing up nicely. And like you said, I brought us a treat today. Oh, what did you bring? Oh, where, oh, where have my edible flowers gone? Oh. Since we have edible flowers today for a nice garnish. Thought it'd be suitable for our Valentine's Day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Does that mean they're actually edible, Chef? Sure, try one. Okay, here we go, guys. Remember, this is not like eating a... Don't eat a real orchid. A bug. <laughs> Just eat an edible orchid. Mm. Kind of flowery, right? Very <laughs> floral tasting. Just in, I love it, Chef. This is awesome. You'll be your little dipping butter. That'll work. I have a little for your plating. Mm. That one, yep. We're gonna want to. Heat this up just for a second so it'll be nice and liquefied. Fifteen seconds so that way it's perfect. Nice and liquid. So we're just warming the butter so that for our plating, our dish, you're gonna eat your, your lobster to be able to dip it into the warm butter. That's correct. Perfect. That's my favorite. Make sure you take from the bottom so you get some of that garlic in there. Have you heard from Ashley? Is Ashley on? It's, how's her dinner going? Ashley is on. She's on mute. She's on mute? She gave us a two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. All right. All right. So now, we're going to grab, get our lobster tail out. Good. Nice and creamy, a little cheesy since we've added our Parmesan. Reason we didn't add a lot of salt into this is because here's our salt pump in it right there. Oh, yeah. that's a good point. So when thinking about that as we're preparing these dishes and stuff, I try to not over salt things or anything, but also, you know, are we going to use something that's going to have that saltiness to it? So we, instead of adding it right now, right. you know, salt and pepper to taste, we added our Parmesan cheese that'll give it a little bit of saltiness to it. Perfect. So we're gonna wanna take. So creamy. Oh my God. How do we wanna do this? You're the plater. I know. <laughs> Good portion there. Take our lobster tail. Here. Take it all the way. Just center the plate. Smell that down. A little butter there. Make sure you don't have no on the rim. Nice and clean. And then, There's a question about were we dipping the brush in the butter and then brushing the raw lobster? Is that leftover butter okay to eat? That's what we warmed we up. We just heated it back up. You heated it back up. Correct. Ooh, uh, Sam shared theirs. That's uh, that we're about done it. right there. What do you think of that? Nice. So I am going to open up the screen if anybody wants to share their dish with us as well. Absolutely. If you want to share your dish, 
Um, Jennifer is going to. I'm going to take a picture of our dish. Now we kind of cheated. We had the chef, but I'm telling you guys. Now you also, if you want to take another picture from the tail end, right, and then from here. Wow. Okay, Chef, what are we doing now? Getting the getting our sugar ready. Sugar ready. Our strawberries out of the, the refrigerator there. Are you ready, sugar? Already ready, already. All right, we're going to sugar up those strawberries. We sure are. Presents. We're going to want. Wow, um, you guys have some towel. great, we get great two paper dishes. Towel. So we're just going to use our paper towel as like a dry towel, essentially, is what we're going to want to do. Now we want you guys to take the photo of your dish and post it on our website for a $25 Starbucks gift certificate. And make sure you tell everybody how much fun you had tonight and share it with others so we can get them on next time. And please tag the Rider Elite team. Tag the Rider Elite. So we're just gonna strain our strawberries out. The reason we're going this route is so we can dive into some champagne. Oh, ho, ho, I like that, Chef. That makes it multi-purpose. That's right. You could dump it out if you wanted to, but I wouldn't go that route. I wouldn't go that route. I heard some people put it in the cat bowl. What's up with that? Well. <laughs> <laughs> So we just want to get them out. The reason we put it down is to kind of absorb any access so that that way when we put them in our sugar. Oh, I see what you're doing. Mm. Oh, 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 now guys, you're getting some great secret tips That's from amazing. the chef. So we don't want to go too heavy, just lightly roll it. Oh, those look great. And how easy. What uh -huh. an easy dessert to make. Yeah, it goes as far as you want it to. And like with this one, you won't need any whipped cream or anything because sugar's already there. Absolutely. So. Just like such. That's fantastic. That looks amazing. As you are all finishing up your dishes, who has any more questions for us? Any questions? Jennifer or Anybody have any questions? Oh, let's see what we have here. Did everybody post their pictures Lots of their of great dinner? Pictures. Some people post on here. Jennifer and Sherry, we saw theirs. It looks amazing. So good. Some other people, I saw them taking pictures, so they're probably going to be posting. Oh, I love it. Where did you say to send the pic? Do you want it tagged on Facebook? Jennifer will put it in the um, in the chat box for everybody, so she can so they know where to to pay to follow us on Facebook. Wow, fantastic! Now, Chef. Give us some ideas because we have some children that have been responding going, I want to get involved. I want to help. I want to become a master chef like you. Well, you got to get the, the, How do we get the kids involved? You just It's real simple. Get them, take something that they like, chicken tenders, something, teach them this is how we do it. It's a simple process. It really doesn't take a lot, so to speak. Take pancakes like we talked about. Yeah, everyone likes chocolate chips, mm -hmm. you know, chocolate strawberry pancakes. Ooh. So then we can step it up a little bit. There you go. Remember when uh, we did our cheesecake last time? Yeah. Yep. Same concept with that, right over your pancakes, chocolate chip pancakes, and now we have an elevated pancake. And I have one of my dishes that I've always loved, and I taught this online to uh, uh, my 
my niece, and it was uh, what was it? Raspberries Jubilee. Yeah, that's another one that's so a Jubilee. That's right. Kind of a, it's a little you can more make your own sauce, right? Yep. Yeah, a little more uh, involved, but that's good. That's what you want them to do. You want them to get involved. You want to show them. First thing you want to teach them is the oven's hot. <laughs> that's the <laughs> first thing you want no, to teach them. I, I have. Probably you and me both, yeah. right? Yeah. And this was from my knife uh, experience. So, you know, be careful, guys. And yeah, and show them, you know, chop simple things. So, you know, I taught my son and my other son how to use the knife properly. This is how we cut an onion. Right. This is how we cut a watermelon. Once you use those things, you cut a cantaloupe the same, you cut a pineapple the same, you cut an apple the same. So you show them these things. Scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs is a great one to show the kids how easy it is. Great right? scrambled eggs. I actually just taught one of my sons uh, just the other day for our next class doing the homemade pasta with the shrimp alfredo. Yes. How to make alfredo sauce. Ooh. Take one of our five mother sauces and add yes, a few ingredients. Yes, the five mother sauces. You add a few ingredients. The next thing you got, boom, alfredo sauce. So. Getting them involved really helps change their taste palate, keeps them away from bean burritos every night. Right. Mac and cheese is another one. Absolutely. So you can show them how to make homemade cheese. Take your mother sauce like the Alfredo, you add some cheddar to it, a little Gruyere cheese, a little Gouda to it. So you can show them. And then when it's all done, hey guys, you want some bacon in there? Throw some bacon in there. Yes. And then they enjoy that. Then they're eating it going, hey, this is good. I made this. So then they're going to go to all their buddies. They know how to make scrambled eggs. And you know, a lemonade stand is one thing, guys. But could you imagine having a stand maybe with homemade cupcakes or some sort of breakfast? Oh, absolutely. Or, you know, you want to make some money, kids? There is nothing but opportunity out there for you if you learn the culinary skills of cooking. Well, and I fell into cooking by chance and uh you know i figured what a great way to always have a job because someone's always <laughs> everyone want wants to eat, to eat. everybody it's wants good. to eat and then i found my passion how much i love it and playing with food and how to make plates look pretty you know so i can't draw on paper very good but i can make <laughs> food look really <laughs> good it's so that's, all right that's my well, that that guys you're gonna take a picture of this and wow look at that and everybody we want to thank you all for joining us tonight and sharing valentine's with all of us and from us to you have a great evening enjoy your dinner happy valentine's day. happy valentine's and we'll see you soon stay safe out there thanks guys all right let's eat okay so you know what guys this is so awesome we have created a wonderful meal look at how that looks oh my gosh i can't wait to share it with everyone and this dessert oh for for us behind the scenes yeah this is